Okay, everybody, 43 people have joined. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take advantage of um, my, let's see. Do you see my iPad there? Yeah, I think you do, right? Yeah. So what I have is just a little handwriting that I did earlier today to review and um, what you see here, uh, what I've annotated here is uh, we have the standard basis, the standard basis I and J. This is what we call the standard basis. So for any vector X that I've written down here, we know that that vector is represented as a linear combination of the basis vectors where the coordinates X and Y are the scalars in that linear combination. So the question then arises, uh, if you have any vector, any vector V uh, that is represented in standard basis so that its coordinates are, are known in the standard basis, just like in X before, um, just above. The question then is, what would be its coordinates if we change to another basis, say A and B? And this is what we were seeing in the um, in this part of the lesson. So we, we we wrote we concretely defined these two vectors A and B, and then the matrix uh, um, that we called C uh, was the matrix that is formed with these two vectors as columns. We ask, what would be the coordinates of this vector V if uh, we were to express it in the basis AB? Okay, that is a question. If we were to express the vector in the basis AB. And because AB are the columns of C, and uh, matrix multiplication is a linear combination of the matrix columns. The question, what would its coordinates be in the basis AB is the same as the question of um, what would be the vector X that multiply, mo which multiplied with the matrix C gives us this matrix V. That is the same question. What is the vector X that in this multiplication, because of the fact that matrix multiplication is a linear combination of the matrix columns. And so what we're saying is, look at the previous uh, example where it was very clear, right? We, it's more comfortable for us to say um, in, in the previous example that the coordinates of the vector X and Y are the scalars in a linear combination of I and J that gives us that vector that was more comfortable to us, we're used to it. But in here, we're asking for the same thing with A and B as the basis. So what are the coordinates? What are the scalars in a linear combination of A and B that give me the vector V? That is the same as solving a linear system, um, uh, CX equals V, where X is the unknown vector. It's the same as solving a linear system. Now, once you find that linear system, once you, sorry, once you solve that linear system, once you find X, then what you have is that C, the matrix C is the matrix that converts from the AB basis to the standard basis. And so this is the last thing that we saw uh, at the end of last class that is quite important. What I've written here, um, what I've written here is the idea that uh, if you were to have a vector uh, in, um, um, in, in a different basis for some reason, this could happen because for example, um, you know, in, in computer graphics, you may have things that change from one scene to another scene where the things, things are transformed. And so you, you, you're working in other bases. In robotics, you may have to change a, a basis for the purposes of computing the motions of different parts. It's very common that you have that situation and you have the vector 
uh, v, this vector v that we had originally, you have it expressed in a, another basis. So the, 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 what we have expressed here is what happens if we want to apply a transformation that we know? For example, a rotation. We know how to write a rotation. We know how to write, uh, write shear. And um, say we want to apply a rotation to this vector V. What we do is first multiply by the matrix C. Why? To converge to a standard basis where we know the transformation. Then multiply by the matrix R, the rotation that is going to provide that transformation that we want to achieve. And then finally multiply by C inverse to go back to the basis A comma B. And then we have achieved um, what we wanted to, which is to apply a known transformation to a vector in a different basis. And this relationship that we see here, C inverse R C multiplied by X, this is something that appears quite often. And it's a pattern that you should uh, learn to recognize, uh, a pattern in linear algebra that you should learn to recognize. And what's hard to wrap your head around is the fact that we multiply by C to go to the standard basis. We rotate and then, and so we're, so we're looking at the transformations from left to right, because whenever we multiply, you know, we have a vector and we multiply by a matrix, then we multiply by, the result of that is a vector. We multiply by another matrix, the result of that is a vector, and then we multiply by another vector. So we're going from, um, from right to left, right? Which is, is, is unusual for us Western uh, uh, people, for, for us who write, you know, uh, Western languages. Uh, so this is, this is a pattern that I wanted to highlight a bit more uh, for you today. So if I go back to the notebook, this is what we were talking about right here. The matrix C with columns uh, uh, corresponding to these two vectors, the vectors that are a basis, um, find in the vector X that are the coordinates of little v, in the new basis corresponds to solving a linear system, right? And this vector that we found is, it corresponds to the coordinates in the basis A comma B. At the end of last class, we had uh, this, this, uh, this, this uh, visualization that um, uh, was showing to you the idea of change of base, basis. The vector that you see in red here, horizontally pointing left three units, is the vector v, right? Go back, vector v is minus three comma zero there. So that is the vector uh, expressed in the standard basis ij. It has the coordinates minus three, zero. Expressed here on the right with a and b as a basis, it has the coordinates um, minus two, one. Over here, this, um, this, this idea here. Right. If we want to apply a known transformation, first move to the standard basis, then transform, and then finally uh, uh, change of basis again to a comma b. We called it a comma b.